Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at another tool that will give us some more manual control and editing power here. So what we're going to look at is this color replacement tool. If you come to where your brush tool is, right, we can see color replacement tool and mixer brush tool. There'll be another video on the mixer brush tool, but what we're going to look at here is this one, right, the color replacement tool. So the way that I've had you learn how to make color adjustments here and colorizations is through selections, right? So if we wanted to turn this red bell pepper green, we would have, um, we would have made a selection here and then come to adjustments and hue saturation, hit colorize, right? And then play with our, our hue and saturation until we get, until we get a color we're happy with and then boom. Right, so learning this method has given us more time and experience with selections and refining those selections and playing with layer masks here. So if I wanted to adjust the layer mask, I could paint with white or black. This is non-destructive. I can turn this on or off. So we have a tremendous amount of control, but a lot of this is automatic, right? Notice it, it filled in that entire, that entire selection. But Sometimes it may not be necessary to always make a selection to do quick changes, right? So in the, in the videos that we went over last week and we saw those quick spot edits, right, for blur or lightning or dodging areas, um, we can see how these can be beneficial, right? The manual adjustments can be a lot faster, even though they're destructive for the most part, except for the blur and sharpen and smudge, right? This can be just kind of a just efficient way of working, especially if we know what we want to do already and if we understand how all of these tools and techniques work, right? So what I'm going to show you now is kind of an easier, faster way to make some colorizations. But again, I felt it was necessary for us to learn how to make selections and, and colorize things rather than doing it this way because using the color replacement tool, this is destructive, right? So once I do this, I won't be able to turn it on or off or anything like that. I can go to the history and I can you know, I can step back to a prior state, but just know that the color replacement tool works that way. So it works just like the background eraser tool, right? So we have our, we have all of our settings at the top here. And basically it's these three, it's the continuous sampling, the, the one-time sampling, and then locking in that background. So if I click on my color replacement tool, we see that nothing, nothing changes except for what those specifics were, right? So in mode here, we have hue, saturation, color, luminosity. You can change those if you wanted to work on those independently, but I'm just going to leave this on color. And let's see, I'm going to kind of pick a, a darker green here and I can zoom in to show you how this works. So if I, I'll keep this on contiguous, that tolerance is a bit high. Let me take that down to maybe 40, 39, that's fine. Um, so let's, let's do this. So if I just click on this red, Right? And if I just I kind of move around, it's it's continuously sampling where that middle dot point is, right? And notice if I come out to the white, it's not going to do anything there. But if I come too far, if my sample point comes over, then we'll see that it's going to turn green. It turns that white background green because it thinks that's the sample point that I want. Right? So I don't I don't want that, but just to show you how the tool works, I'll just finish coloring this. And we can see I didn't have to make a selection, right? This works very, very quickly. If you zoom in close, right, there's a little bit of a, in some areas, there might be just the slightest red on the outline where you could adjust the tolerance and, and work with that or play around with that if you wanted to. But for, again, so just to make a quick edit here, this works really, really well, right? And the areas that I came out of bounds here, I could, I mean, I could just come to my eraser tool and I could just work on cleaning that up manually, right? I could, I could erase that manually there. So that's the color replacement tool on that continuous setting, but it works just the same way. If I were to put this on just that one sample area, if I, if I come to this one now, right, wherever I click and hold, that's going to be the sample point. And when I get to the highlight here, we'll see that it won't, it won't change that because the sample was locked in wherever I first clicked versus continuous, right? But here, I'll just go ahead and I'll finish that out. So this is the color replacement tool. And like I said, it can be really fast. It can be really efficient, 
right? If it's if it's an easy image like this, right? Not much background noise going on, right? Not a lot of similarity in the colors. So this could work really well, but notice over here there's no there's no new layer or anything like that. If I want to go back to a previous state, I have to come up to the history, right? And then right if I wanted to you know, see what it looked like beforehand, I could switch back and forth between those two points in time there, right? And the last thing I'll show you here with the color replacement tool is that it can be used as a way to further control your, your, the color of your marks. So for example, if I just come to the brush tool and let me, let me make a new layer here and let's just say I select, I'll just stay on green since I'm on it. And let's say I, you know, I make some, you know, I make some marks with my brush and right, let's say I'm, I'm really happy with the shape and right, I like, I like the form, but I wanted to change, right, some parts of color in here, right? So I could, I could use the lasso tool. I could come in here and, right, make a little selection and then come back to my brush tool and let's say I pick a different, pick a different color. And if I'm, if I'm inside this space here, then, right, that can, that can control the color of the mark that I want to make. But I could also, I'm going to just undo that, I could also come to my color replacement tool and if I'm on that continuous sampling or even the one-time sampling, basically, right, if I want to just change some interior color of this mark that I really like, I could just come and, right, I can just come and click and, right, it's only going to sample inside of the screen. Right? So that gives you a kind of a manual painting adjustment that you can do with that color replacement tool. And what I'm going to have you guys do is your task will be to change the color of these three bell peppers. You could, I guess you could change them to any color you want, but there is one thing that I want you to pay attention to, and I'll give you a hint, right? So light bounces around. So after you make the change, I want you to see if you can take it a step further and do what needs to be done to integrate the 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 shadow, right? And I'm not, I'm going to leave you to that. I'm going to I'm not going to give you instruction there. I want to see how how you go about doing it. There's multiple ways that you could do this and we've gone over we've gone over several of them. So using the color replacement tool on the peppers, change those colors, but then however you need to do it, let's make sure that those, let's make sure those shadows get adjusted to be a, a believable rendition of what that shadow would look like to, to whatever color you change your pepper to. Okay?